Glory to God. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, Rabba Shitele Bosondo, Rama Kisha Lalabose. Zondo Rama Satalabosoto, Rama Shelabose. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, you said you would inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, we're worshiping and we're praising you today. Let the glory of the Lord fill this place. Let the glory of the Lord fill this place. Father, let your tangible presence be ever present in this place today. Father, we're ready. Father, we're ready. For that greatest outpouring that the world has never seen. Lord, let us be the ones. Father, let us be the ones to usher in this move. Let us be the ones to usher in the presence. Father, like never before. Father, let us be the ones that walk in miracles and signs and wonders. Father, let us be the chosen generation. Father, let us be the royal priesthood. Let us be the holy nation today, Father. Let us be the ones. So, Father, right now, we seal this service with the blood of Jesus. Everybody says, I will be the one. Oh, my, my, my. Shut up. And the Spirit of the Lord says, Do you not know that I have torn down the veil? That I have removed what has separated the old from the new? And that you are welcome to come into my presence at any time. I have invited you in, but the sons and the daughters of God are the ones that are allowed to come boldly before the throne of grace for help in time of need. So do not hesitate to come into my presence, says the Spirit of God, because that is the fullness of glory. That is where all my goodness resides. The goodness that I desire to pour out upon you, to soak you, to fill you, to overwhelm you, the cup runs over. Do not hesitate, for the veil has been removed, says the Lord. Come on, somebody, give God a shout of praise. Come on, give God a shout of praise. This is your moment. I said this is your moment. This is your moment. This is your time of destiny. This is your moment. Come on, this is. Don't let your moment pass you by. This is the time. Come on, this is the place. This is the day. This is the hour that God wants to do something supernatural in your life. Come on, somebody, give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! My God, my God, my God, my God. Well, praise the Lord. My, 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 my. There is such an anointing of the Lord in this place. You have to make a Holy Ghost executive decision what, how much you want out of this today. You can get 30, you can get 60, or you can get 100. Of the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I'm choosing the 100. I'm not going to leave here without getting the 100% that God has for me today. Amen. Well, you may be seated this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, it is an honor to be here. My wife and I and our team, they travel with us in all the crusades that we do. And uh, God is just exalting in many, many mighty ways. And we're so thankful. That has always been my heart desire to have a team to travel. And, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to preach when you've got a Holy Ghost worship team behind you. Hallelujah. And so just in the past uh, 12 months, God began to move and began to 
to be able to put start putting the pieces together and uh so for the past um 12 months we've been tra they've been traveling with us and flying all over the country and just holding these holy ghost meetings we call them fresh fire crusades and uh, god is just i mean the miracles and the signs and the wonder that's taking place so praise the lord wow what a week what a week glory to god it has been an amazing week uh we had a staff meeting yesterday and we met at my uncle's restaurant and put on the feed bag a little bit and you know you can't go wrong with frank's barbecue and coleslaw you know and uh and so we just we had we just had a great meeting yesterday and we got to talking about the meeting this past week and uh in our in our crusades you know every night we get together and we always have a meeting after the meeting they all come to our hotel room and we sit around and we just talk about the presence of the lord but we talk about most of the time what can we do to go to a higher level i'm never satisfied i'm never satisfied i i, I don't ever want to get to the place where i'm satisfied amen so we so we were just talking about the presence of the lord and, and the holy spirit said this to me when we were just talking I said, today, we're going to seal this. All week long, camp meeting 2021, we're going to seal it today. So, you know, it's like when you're canning vegetables. And, you, you know, you boil the pot and you boil the vegetables and you cook the vegetables and then you put them in the mason jars and you, it's called canning. I don't know why it's called canning when you got a jar, but it's called canning. And so once, once you do that and let it sit and then you seal it, you know, let it breathe, let the air come out, then you seal it. Well, yesterday, Saturday, was your letting the air out. And today, we're sealing it. We're putting a cap on everything that was spoken prophetically, everything, every word that was given from su last Sunday morning all the way through today. We're going to seal this today, and you'll see. Now, I, I, now, let me just say, I'm not responsible. So if your neighbor, you know, they act out of their normal character, then that's fine. Just, you know, I'm not responsible. Because the Holy Ghost is going to move in this place. I'm telling you. I said the Holy Ghost is going to move. Hallelujah. I said the Holy Ghost is going to move. Praise the Lord. Well, this is my lovely wife, Jerry Ann. And uh, she has something on her heart. I want to let her go ahead and share it. Then we're going to go ahead and get the message. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. How many of you are so grateful for the mercy of God? The mercy of God that never ends. There's a... Um, a, a word in one of the translations that talks about the inexhaustible mercy. He is rich in mercy, Ephesians 2. It's inexhaustible. And that is exactly why he tore down the veil. Because of his great mercy. Psalm 107 in the Passion says, It's his marvelous love and his magical mercy. You know, kids... They think that something that they can't explain is magical. And that's the thing about God's mercy. You'll never really be able to reach what it means. But we can cry out for mercy. Blind Bartimaeus cried out for the mercy of God. He had a revelation of the Christ. And he said, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he was healed. He didn't remain the same because the mercy of God doesn't leave us where we're at. The mercy of God takes away the punishment that should have been ours or the results that should have been ours. We live in a fallen world and there are diseases that should be ours. But God has removed them because we should have received them. But in his mercy, with the blood of Jesus Christ, he said, no, I already took it. I already took it. As we were coming across the bridge, there were dark clouds. But what was so cool was they were being pushed back by a wall. And the white clouds looked like this. And it reminded me of what it must have looked like going through the, the Red Sea when it was parted. Because they were just scooped up and they were pushing the dark clouds away. And as we continued across the bridge, I found myself in the bowl of those clouds. That they were scooped up on a wall all around us. 
And that's what I want you to have a picture of you sitting in the mercy of God. Now, many times we can say, we say a phrase, we are at the mercy of another person. Perhaps somebody, they're at the mercy of the court. And that means the court has all the power to make all the decisions concerning your life. So do you know that when you say, I am at the mercy of God, you have given him whole and complete power to operate on your behalf. Hallelujah. So I can say, body, I'm at the mercy of God. Body, you hear me? I'm at the mercy of God. I give him whole and complete power over my body. And I reign supreme. Hallelujah. We thank God for his mercy today. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You got it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say thank God for mercy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm going to try this again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Everyone lift your hands towards heaven. Say this with me. Say, I'm ready for a mighty move of the Word of God today. I'm planning it in my heart, deep in my heart. No demon, no devil in hell will uproot everything that I have received this week. So, devil, just to let you know, you have no authority and you have no place in my life. So get under my feet because that's where you belong. Now give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. You know, I was, uh, I was praying Friday afternoon and I thought I was um, actually Thursday afternoon. And uh, just going over things in my heart and in my spirit. And uh, so I thought I was going to go in a different direction. And then Friday morning, um, our drummer, Liz, she had this shirt on. And I didn't see it at first. And, and so in my prayer time, I saw the word remember. Just in big, bold letters, just go across my eyes and just said remember. And uh, so... Friday morning when she walked across it, she was at the drums, and all of a sudden I saw it, and all of a sudden my, my, I focused in, and she's behind the glass, so it's kind of hard to see. And all of a sudden she had this shirt. It said, remember. And it talked about the goodness of God. Remember. So this morning, as I, and so this week, as I, and Friday, and also yesterday, I began to just meditate on the goodness of God. And the Holy Spirit kept saying, Remember. With everything that has gone on in the world and everything that is happening, he says, you have to remember. You know, the Word of God says that we are forgetful people. You know, and those that have been in camp meeting every service or some of the services that you made, you cannot allow that just to be a, mo a moment, a once-in-a-lifetime word. But when God gives us a word, it is, it is a prophetic word. Anything that comes from the Word of God is prophetic. So anytime that you hear my dad ministering, my mom or my brother or my, or my sister-in-law, they're up here ministering, or any man or woman of God that is ministering, and they're, and they're speaking the word, and they're coming from the word of God, that is very prophetic. Yes. You know, and sometimes in today's society, we get kind of skittish about prophetic, or about the prophecy. But when, it, when it's coming from the word of God, it is prophetic. When God, everything that God put in the word, it was never intended to be a one-time event or just for one generation or for one nation or for one period of time. Yes. Amen. Uh, come on now. And so in my prayer time, the Holy Spirit kept saying, remember, remember. And so I began to put this message together. And this is just for you today. This is fresh off the throne room of God. And uh, so I began to meditate and I began to study on remember. The word remember is in the Bible 240 times. Now, if it's in the Bible that many times, then that means that we, there's something to that that is very important. That means that God prophesied 
240 times he spoke the word, remember. So that tells me that we must be forgetful people. And it is in your forgetfulness that Satan actually begins to take advantage of you. It is not in the remembrance time. Huh? Come on now. When you start meditating on the Word of God and you start meditating on the things of God, come on now. It is not in those times because the Bible says, stir up the gift of God. And so when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and you begin to read the Word and meditate on the Word, the enemy, he has no choice but to flee. The only time the enemy can take advantage of you is you step out of the remembrance position and you put yourself in the forgetful position. Oh, don't get quiet on me now. We're going to shout here in a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. So here it says that's 240 times. Now let's break it down. That's 10 times a day in a 24-hour period. 10 times a day the Lord is telling you, remember. That's 24 hours a day. And in that 24 hours, the Lord is saying, remember, because that tells me at least 10 times a day, the enemy is going to come to you. Huh? Come on now. That means the enemy is going to come to you at least 10 times a day. But guess what? God already knew that. In his mercy and his grace and in in the goodness of, his, of himself and who he is as El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough, he said, don't worry about it. The Bible says in James chapter 1, it says, tests and trials, count it all joy. So how can we count it all joy when we're in a test and a trial, when we're being tested and tried and our body's under attack and our finances is under attack and our children's under attack and my marriage is under attack? How in God's name can I sit there and rejoice and have the joy of the Lord? Why? Remember! Oh, my God. You got to remember. Even if you got to go back and remember one, just one miracle in your life or one time that God actually answered a prayer because God is not a one-time God. He's not a one-time event God. He is El Shaddai. He's a God that will do it again and 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 again. My God, he will do it again. Woo! It ain't over yet, baby. Again and again, 240 times, 10 times a day. He says, the word remember means this. It says to bring to mind or to think of it again. To bring to mind or think of it again, remembering, to bring to mind and think of it again. But what you don't know is, once you bring it to mind, it says it gives you the power to reproduce. That's the definition of remember. To bring to mind, and I, and I put it like this, that once you bring it to mind, then you have the power to reproduce it. Now, you know that can work good or bad. You just sit there and remember your past, and you're just sitting there. If you're meditating on your past, guess what? You're about to reproduce the past. Right. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Come on now. That's why you know, the enemy comes to you, and he tries to bring your past up. When the next time he brings your past up, you just need to remind him of his future. Because his future is in the pits of hell. Come on, his future is, is, is being bound and being thrown into cast into the lake of fire. That is his future. But see, he's trying to bring as many people of God's children that he can. That's right. But you got to remember. Remember what Brother Isaac was preaching about. Uh, come on, that you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. Uh, come on, you got to remember that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You got to remember in 2 Corinthians 2.14 that thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. For I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. No weapon formed against me shall proper. Why? Because I am a child of the living God. I I know who I am. Yes. Oh, somebody give God a shot of praise. Yes. 
Oh my God, my God. Say remember. And so when we remember, we're actually empowering ourselves. We're empowering ourselves. When we begin to put ourselves in remembrance of the things of God, and we put ourselves in remembrance of the Word, and you begin to put yourself in remembrance of all the Word that was taught this week. From Sunday morning at the master's table, you can choose whether you want to eat or not. Come on, putting on new clothes. You know, when he said it, the Lord said this to me. He said that one of the reasons why the body of Christ struggles is they're trying to put old clothes into new skin. Huh? And the reason why is because you are not forgetting the past. You cannot bring the past into the new. Oh, come on now. You can't bring the past into it. And you want to know why? You come to church, you bring your tithes, you give your offerings. You come up here, you have hands laid on you. And you know you felt the presence of God, but just a couple of days later, you go back the way you came. Amen. Why? Because the enemy has come in and, try, and got you to remember of what it was. But the Holy Spirit said, don't remember what it was. Remember what it is. Because see, when God gives us a word, come on now, when God gives us a word, it is our responsibility to lock it in to our memory bank. It is not heaven's responsibility. It is your responsibility to lock in the word of God, put it in your memory bank, so that when the destined trials come, glory to God, you can remember and you can empower yourself to reproduce that same victory that you got last time. Oh, my God. Shut up, oh say. It was funny. Yesterday, yesterday, I guess it was it was probably 11 or something. I don't remember exactly what time it was. So I uh, I come downstairs. I've been studying and praying. And, and so I come downstairs, and my dad's sitting in his recliner. And I come down and say, Dad, I need to go to uh, Dick's Sporting Goods because i I gotten a couple things for my brother's birthday was yesterday but they didn't have one thing that I, that I was looking for. And uh, he said, yeah, let's go. So he said, well, let me put my shoes on. And so he goes, you know, into the bedroom. Of course, I'm following him in the bedroom. I'm a son. I can go in there. I just have to make sure I not make sure mama's decent. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so when the door is shut, you just don't open the door. Right. You tap. Now, when the door is open, I don't knock. I just walk on in. The door is open. Right. Huh? Come on now. When the door is open, you don't need permission. Let me try this side over here. Huh? See, too many body people in the body of Christ, they're looking for permission when God says, I've become the open door. My son died 2,000 years ago so he could become the open door. The veil was ripped. The veil was torn off so that the door can be opened. And you're sitting there and trying to, 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 to fast and pray and seek God. And the Lord is saying, the door has been open all the time. You sit there wearing yourself out when the door is open all the time. Quit knocking and just come on in. Remember. So anyway, we, I walk, you know, we walk in. I'm following my dad. We walk in, and he's putting his shoes on and everything. And so I come out, and I'm talking to Mom. And Dad comes in the little hallway there in the bathroom between the two closets. And, uh, and so all of a sudden, I, I don't know what came on him. I don't know why he did it. I can't remember why he did it. He just swelled up. All of a sudden, he just went. And it caught my attention. I was like, it's there. Now, you understand. Now, what I'm talking about, I mean, because my dad used to work out, you know, he used to be, my, I always grew up with my dad as a big man, wide shoulders. Yeah, I'm just going to be honest with you. I was scared of my daddy growing up. I ain't going to lie to you. It's just the truth is. And mama says, I'm going to tell your daddy when he gets home, fear, I cannot function right the rest of the day. And the problem, because I remember what happened the last time she told dad. So my memory bank, I, and so because I'm pondering on that, it was about to reproduce what had happened the last time. <sighs> so then my brother, he, was, he don't know nothing about that. He was the golden child. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. My dad was an equal opportunist. <laughs> he, he, he would tear our hind, my hind part up just as much as he would tear his hind part up. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyway, so, oh, my gosh. So here we go. He, so he comes in, and he swells up. Well, now, when he swelled up, his V, anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, it's one of these. You know what I'm talking about? And he just, <laughs> he swelled up, and all of a sudden, that which I hadn't seen in a very long time, in a very long time, pre-stroke, basically, all of a sudden, the muscles popped out. His, the, the lats and, you know, the back of his, his back went from like this to like this, like a V. <laughs> Mama's getting excited over here. <laughs> Y'all can't hear way back there in the back, but I'm just letting you know, she's happy. <laughs> and so when he did that, I said, Dad, it's there. She remembered. <laughs> Huh? Huh? Come on. So when he did that, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit reminded what said this to me. Dropped in my spirit. It's there. Once you become a born-again Christian, and you may have gone through a lot of stuff. Huh? You may have been beat up, you have may have been slapped, and you may have been stepped on. And you may not in the natural, you look in the mirror, you may not look like how you used to be. But baby, let me tell you something. It's still there. Oh, come on now. I said it's still there. The same El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough is still there. That same faith, that come on, that same spirit that raised Christ. Oh, come on. I said that same spirit. I said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. You know how much power it takes to raise somebody from the dead? That same -a thing. Come on now. Somebody say the same -a thing. That same thing is inside of you. It's imparted into you. All you got to do is remember. And so being that it's there, in order to get it back on a regular basis, then you got to exercise it. Now, we don't like that part. Huh? Because, see, just like my dad, he could swell up and hold it for a, short, for a period of time, but he can't, he can't, be, he can't walk around like that 24-7. Why? Because the stamina is not there yet. Notice I say yet. But it's there. So in order for him to get back like that all the time, then he has to exercise. He has to build his strength up. Come on, glory to God. And sometimes he don't, may not feel like it, but he'll get up and he'll walk, even though he don't feel like walking. We walked around all around Dick Sporting Goods yesterday. After a whole long week of, of services, three times a day, we walked around. Huh, come on now. And I'm sure his body may not have felt like it, but he did it. Come on, there are days you may wake up in the morning, and you may not feel like praising the Lord. There are days you may wake up, and there's a pain in your body. There are days you may wake up, and you're facing a very serious situation. But I want you to know something this morning. Remember! Somebody help me remember! Oh, my God, my God, my God. Woo! And so when the Lord says, I am not a one-time God. I'm the same God. He said, I'm the same God that brought Noah out of that mess, that brought the flood, what most people would thought was a hard situation. But I, re I, I, I protected Noah. I put him in a safe zone. Oh, come on now. You got to remember. You got to remember, even no matter how bad the storm is, God always provides a safe zone. Huh? It didn't stop the rain from coming. It didn't stop the wind from blowing. But it did stop them from being destroyed. Huh? Come on, I'm sure there were times on that boat, on that, on that ark, that times were not pleasant. Huh? Come on, you're on there for, for, you know, for 40 days and... You know, in 40 nights of raining and not seeing no sun, not seeing no daylight, you know, you, you know, your body, your natural body begins to act out. And then you got family members with you. Oh, sweet Jesus. 
<laughs> Come on, 40 days? And you're in there with your family? Huh? Come on, I don't care how close y'all may be, but after 40 days of looking at the face for the <laughs> And hearing the same voice. Huh? Come on now. But they, Noah had to keep going back to remember that this is just a temporary situation for a permanent victory. Huh? Come on. Huh? This is just a temporary situation for a permanent victory. Look at somebody and say, you're about to become a testimony. Oh, look at your other neighbor and say, you too. Huh, come on. Come on. Come on. Things are about to change. I said things are about to change. There's been a shift this week. Here at Victor Life Church, there's been a shift. There's been a fresh wind. Come on now. There's been a fresh wind that's blown through this place. Things are about to change. Come on, Glory. We're not trying to get back the way we were. I don't want to get back the way we were. I want to go where God wants us to go. I want to be better than I was before. I want to be greater in the things of God than I was before. I want to be more anointed than I was before. I want to experience the glory more than I ever had before. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm expecting. Somebody! Glory. Oh my God, my God. Blow, Holy Ghost, wind blow. Shut out of bullshit. And some of you right now, I'm telling you right now, I'm feeling my spirit. There's healing taking place in this house. You ain't got to wait till the end of service, baby. Let me tell you something. The anointing of the Holy Ghost, there's a spirit of healing that's blowing through this place. Huh? That's it. There's a spirit. Oh, my God, my God. There's a spirit of healing flowing through this place. You need to reach out and take it right now. Remember. Glory to God. So once you bring it to mind, then you have the ability and the authority to reproduce it. That's good. Think about that. So what, my question to you today is, so what are you wanting to reproduce? Because that which you bring to mind, you have to choose. The Bible says cast down those evil imaginations. Why does the Bible say that? Because the Bible, the Word of God knows that if you meditate on that, huh, come on, if you meditate on that, then you're going to reproduce that. Amen. You can't blame the devil. That's right. That's right. You know, it's amazing to me. We give so much credit to the devil. And now he takes it too. Now he'll take it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he will take the credit. You know, it's kind of like um, over the years, you know, we've had these bombings and things like that. And this organization takes the, blank, you know, takes the credit and that organization. And they really didn't have anything to do with it. They just wanted to take the credit because it was something they really wanted to do, but they just couldn't do. Uh, uh, <laughs> huh? Come on now. That's how the devil is. See, the devil would really like to do some things to you. Huh? He would like to really put some things on you. He would really like to destroy some things in your life. Because, let me tell you something. But because of your memory, because you actually had the authority to bring back that which is in the earth, sickness and disease is in the earth. Huh? Come on. Poverty is in the earth. Hurt is in the earth. Pain is in the earth. But the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit is in here. Love, joy, peace. Come on. All these fruits and tempers and all these long, you know, long sorry, all these things, that's in us. That's not in the earth. You need to quit looking at other things of the earth trying to get you that God's already put in you. Because, see, you're trying to remember, you're trying to go back to something in the natural. God said, no, 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 cast down that evil imagination. I don't want you to produce from that. I want you to reproduce the fruits for that what is in inside of you. Oh, my God. Remember, the same God, I said the same God that brought the Israelites over, not just at, at the first sea, the Red Sea. I'm talking about the same God that did the Red Sea, but he did it again. We forget that wasn't a one-time event. You got to go back to the River Jordan. Come on now. After Moses was dead and gone, everybody, and the Israelites thought, well, this is it. This is where we're going to live for the rest of our life. And God said, I'm not, you don't think I brought you here to keep you here, do you? And then I bring you to another river, and they're like, they're like well, how in the world are we going to get across that? Now we're going to spend another 40 years here. But you know what? God told Joshua. I said, God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1. He says, remember. 
as I was with Moses. Oh, come on. He, see, God, even God, he said, get up, Joshua. Come on, get out of yourself. Get over yourself. He said, don't sit here and moan and don't sit here and, and, and waddle in your sorrow because Moses go and you think that this is it. I don't never call just one person. I don't never put all my glory into one person. I have children. <laughs> glory to God. I have sons and daughters. <laughs> glory to God. I have a whole nation of people that I want to pour out my spirit in. I am not a one-time God, and I sure ain't a one-person God. Hallelujah. Remember. Yeah. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. <sighs> and so he told Joshua, get up. Get over yourself. For I'm about to do something. He said, remember, he said, as I was with Moses. Now, when he said that, he said, as I was with Moses, he was unlocking the memory bank of Joshua. See, you need to unlock Allow the Holy Spirit, when the things come against you, Brother Rick, when the tests and trials come, and it may look like a serious situation, it may look like a dire situation, and you may have got a bad report from the doctor, but I got something to tell you today. I got a word for you today. Remember! Yes. Yes. Oh, my God! As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. You need to meditate. Uh-oh, now he gives us some responsibility. And the reason why he said meditate day in and day out on the word, because he said, I need you to remember this, not that. I don't need you to remember what it was like in Egypt. Because see, all the time, the enemy's trying to bring back Egypt. Because see, a lot of them came out of Egypt, but Egypt didn't come out of them. That's right. See, God is bringing you out, and he may bring you out, and you may get a healing, but you don't let that sickness linger around once you receive your healing. Because God brings you into healing, don't bring the sickness with the healing. Oh, my God. I remember I did, uh, three years I did several different crusades with Benny Hinn back in the day. And uh, so he eventually put me in charge of the prayer room. And so I was doing the prayer room for a few crusades. And, uh, and so when I would go, and I remember one particular uh, crusade, I was in Birmingham, Alabama. And, and of course, I was sitting beside Benny Hinn. And I remember, and I got to notice, I never saw Benny Hinn lay hands on the sick. I got to thinking about that. I said, because what you saw, and if you've been to Crusades or you saw on television, all he did was he would line the people up that already got it. And so they would come up. And he said, what did you get healed from? He didn't ask them, what do you need healing? He always asked them, what did you get healed from? And so they would tell them, and then he would just bless them. So what he was trying to do was he was trying to seal the healing. But the problem with that was this, that they, were ne they didn't get the teaching. Because see, without the ingredients of the substance, of the, the, the like, you know, for example, you have a cake, if you ain't got sugar in it, huh? It may look like a cake, huh? But if you ain't got key ingredients, huh, come on, it ain't gonna be edible. Matter of fact, you're not going to keep it. The first thing you're going to do with it is throw it in the trash. And this is what happens to a lot of people in the body of Christ when they come and get their healing or they, they come for prayer. They may, get the re, they may get the symptoms may go away, but that don't mean the sickness and disease went away. Huh? I said the symptoms went away, but that don't mean that the, the sickness and disease went away. Why? Because they didn't have the foundation and they didn't have the word to seal it. Right. Even though um, Brother Benny would lay hands on it and, try, and seal it with a blessing, but in their mind, because the first time that a symptom showed up, they, they didn't have the ability to go back to remember what the word said. Amen. Right. That's right. That's right. They would immediately, their mind would go back to the remembrance of what it was like in pain. 
And so they did a study. 70% of everyone that came to Benny Hinn's uh, crusade, that they, they got, they got their healing, lost their healing within six months. 70%. Had nothing to do with Benny Hinn, had nothing to do with the worship, had nothing to do with the meetings. It had everything to do with the, rem the memory. Because that memory of the pain, the memory of the hurt, the memory of the disease was stronger than the memory of when they got, when the symptoms left. Was stronger than the healing. So that when it came back, they didn't go back on it because they didn't have the word. They didn't have the word that God says in 1 Peter 2, 24, that by his stripes we were healed. Were me and past tense. That means it was a done deal. See, you're not trying. See, the problem is we're trying to get something that, that we already have. Huh? We're trying to get something that we actually already have. We have healing in us. We have, the, we have the spirit of healing inside of us. We have the spirit of joy inside of us. You know, people said, I need you to pray for more joy. I can't do that. I'm sorry. It's impossible. I cannot give you more joy when you already have all joy. What I can pray is this, that the joy will be resurrected, will come out of its dormant state in your body. Huh? So you're trying to pray to get something that you already have. The problem is it's just dormant. Huh? And so you need to exercise it for it to come alive. You got to water it to come alive. Just like when I was talking about my dad a while ago, that it's there. That, that, that the body is there. The, the, the makings and, and the muscles and all the ingredients is there in his body. It's just got to be, it's got to come from its dormant state to its alive state. In order for it to come to a alive state, it's got to be exercised. Yeah. Baby, let me tell you something. It blew me away when I saw that. I had flashbacks. I wanted to go put on another pair of pants and run upstairs. <laughs> because that's the man I remembered. I mean, that, that memory came back and I saw that I remember as a child and growing up and when we would go to the beach, we go, I mean, you would see these big wide shoulders, this massive of a man, strong, mighty, well, guess what? That strength and that mighty is still in the man. I don't care what you're going through this morning. I don't care what you're dealing with this morning. Everything that you need is inside of you. You just got to remember. <laughs> Somebody shout, remember. So in Psalm 77, in verse 11, it says this. I will remember. Everybody say, I will. I will. Remember. remember. It says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, and I will remember the wonders of old. In other words, I'm going to remind myself. If, it, if I've never gotten this type of miracle, then I'm going to find a story. I'm going to find a, 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 a history. I just need to find a history in the word. I need to find a prophetic word that's there to remind myself that God did it one time. Come on now. He healed the blind man one time. That means he can heal my blindness. Uh, come on now. He resurrected Lazarus in a situation. He'd been dead for four days. You don't tell me he can't take care of you when he can raise a man up after four days of being dead. Give him a new heart. Give him a new mind. Come on. Put new blood in him. Make him a whole new person. It calls him to hop out of that situation well I'm here to tell you that somebody hey, I'm here to tell you today my God he's about to do it again remember shut up Oshay shall remember I told you we're gonna seal this week everything and was supernaturally designed. Each service was designed by the Holy Ghost. Every speaker was brought here for such a period of time, for such a day, strategically by the Holy Ghost to put in here, to bring forth the word. And if you notice, everything lined up one and another, one and another. And today, we're going to seal it. We ain't losing that word that we got this week. We're not losing who we are in Christ. We're not losing that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're not losing that I am a child of the living God, therefore I have what God's word says I have. Somebody give God a shout of praise.
don't make me come back there. And so it says here, remember the works. So once again, once you bring it to mind, then you have the ability to reproduce it. Yes. So look, let me tell you something. Let me just tell you something. You don't think this plague is the first time that there's been the plague. This pandemic. Oh, come on. The world. In, in all the thousands of years, there's been one pandemic after another. Yep. Yep. Isn't it amazing that after all these events that God is still God? Yes. Yes. Huh? Amen. Isn't it amazing? I mean, just think about it. Let's just go back to Egypt for a minute when Moses showed up on the scene. And the Lord, and he said, Lord, how are we going to get this? How are we going to get the body of Christ free? How are we going to get your children free? Now, this may, may not have a whole lot of sense to a lot of people. But the Lord says, I'm going to bring some pandemics. Go ahead. Go ahead. He says, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the pandemics and give the world people an opportunity to let my people go. He said, I'm going to give them an opportunity to let them see who my people really are. And you may be in a tough situation. You may be in experience some things, and you may be going through some things. But baby, let me tell you something. We're about to hit the last plague, and the blood's about to be applied. And when the blood's applied, we will not be denied. For we enter in the rest because we got God's best. Seriously, you don't think that what you're going through in your body, you're the only person that's going through this. Your marriage, you don't think this is the first time, do you? You're not the only one. The divorce rate is ridiculous. The average marriage that used to be five years, now it's down to three and a half. Even in the body of Christ. Amen. They include Christians in that. Three and a half years. So in order, just marriages, if it ain't based on the Holy Ghost, and if it ain't based on the Word... And because, see, it has to be based on the Holy Ghost and based on the Word because the only way that you can walk to live in forgiveness is that it's got to come from the Holy Ghost. Yes. Huh? Come on now. And so you don't think that when, it, when this pandemic, so when God took, sent, no, I mean, sent Moses over to Egypt, and Moses said, how, how is this going to work? He said, I'm about to bring some pandemics. Huh? Ten of them. One came along, and that was supposed, should have been enough. God, I mean, God gave Pharaoh many opportunities. He, look, God only intended it to be one. Listen, let me tell you something. This COVID that showed up, the Lord said it to me. He said, if my people who would have called my name shall have humbled themselves and prayed and sought my face, crave out necessity, it would have never touched the United States. That's what he said to me. He said, the body of Christ fell asleep. They went dormant. We all of a sudden, we just got satisfied and we got comfortable. We're just coming to church, hearing a little song, hearing a little word, and going back out and living our lives and not, not getting serious about our relationship with God. If we were serious about our relationship with God and we were spending time praying in the Holy Ghost, I mean, think about it. I grew up at a period of time. I remember the services back in the day. Man, we, they would get start praying in the Holy Ghost and they would create this sound and this roar. And we would, they would do it for, I mean, for a long period of time. The whole congregation just start praying in the Holy Ghost. And did you know the glory of God showed up? Yeah. Wasn't about a song. Wasn't about a person. It was all about the Holy Ghost. We got to get back, huh? Come on, to praying in the Holy Ghost. We got to get serious. If you don't want this pandemic to take advantage of you, then you better get serious, baby. Yes. Remember. And so it took 10 times. 10 pandemics, 10 plagues. And he's still. Well, God says, well, you know what? That's all right. I know how I can get his attention. He says, I'll shrink the population of Egypt. Huh? I'll take out their future warriors. Huh? I'll take out their future warriors. I'll make the strongest nation the weakest nation. In just a matter of hours. 
Because the Bible says that after they applied the blood to the doorpost, the Bible says this, at the same night. Now, we're not talking about days and weeks and months. Baby, let me tell you something. There's about to be a turnaround in the body of Christ, those that are hungry and thirsty. In your situation, there's about to be a great turnaround. It ain't going to take weeks and months and years. It's only going to take hours. <laughs> Okay, we're about to sling some blood in this place. I said, we're about to sling some blood in this place, and things are about to change. Come on, look at somebody and say, things are about to change. And so they apply the blood, and the Bible says that in that same night, the same night, everybody say, same night. Same night. Say, same night. same night. The death angel showed up. In just a matter of hours, Pharaoh's calling for Moses and Aaron. Huh? Come on, read your Bible, Nexus. That's right. yeah. The same night he's calling, he said, go get them. Now, you're talking about a change around, about a turnaround. Now, you're talking about the poorest nation, the sickest nation in the world, the most distraught. There's no joy in, in Egypt and within, within the children of God. There's nothing. There's no joy. There's no peace. There's nothing. All there is pain and sorrow, sickness and disease and poverty. Yeah. They're in captivity. They're, they've been in bondage. But see, Moses got reminded by God that a prophetic word went before this happened because they put themselves in captivity. You do realize that, right? Huh? You need to read your Bible. The only reason why the Israelites were there to begin with because they put themselves there. But God says in 400 years, in 430 years, he said, I'm going to bring them out. Huh? I'm going to bring them out. You don't think God is about to bring you out? Look, you got a word from the Lord Amen. that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Things are about to change. I said, so the same night that Pharaoh sent his soldiers and they went and got Moses and Aaron. And I love this next part. He said this. He said, get your people. He said, get them. Get them ready and get them out of here. He said, no, watch this. He said, take all the silver. He said, take all the gold. See, when the Spirit of God gets to moving, it'll cause the world to lose their mind. Amen. See, that which is attacking you, come on, once you begin to tap into the Holy Ghost, that which has been attacking you, it will cause itself to lose its mind. And all of a sudden, it'll, it'll, it'll leave you. Yes. <laughs> he said, take all the gold, all the silver, all the cattle, everything. He said, take everything. Just take it and get out. I cannot deal with you anymore. When is the last time the devil said, I can't deal with you no more? <laughs> huh, come on. I said, when is the last time the devil said, I've had it up to here with your praying. I've had it up to here with you confessing the word. I've had it up to here with your praise. I've had it up to here with your worship. I've had enough. Get your stuff, get your healing, get your prosperity, get your miracle, and get out of here. Oh my God, somebody give God a shout of praise. I said somebody stand to your feet and give God a shout of praise. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Something's about to change in the house. Shall remember. My God, my God. Shall I say. And in these last days, the Spirit of the Lord would be poured out upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And upon your handmaidens and your servants, God is going to move. Remember. Remember. The only thing that was keeping Lazarus from coming out of that tomb was a stone. Huh? Remember four days prior when they told Jesus. They came to him. Remember they sent word to him. Mary Martha sent word to Jesus. said, 
Master, your friend, our brother Lazarus, your, your friend is dead. And so the disciples asked Jesus, what was he going to do? He said, I'm going to, I'm going to stay the course. I still got some teaching to do. I got some miracles over here that, that, that these people are waiting on me. Huh? See, we get so caught up, we'll get envy or we'll get in strife or we'll get upset because somebody comes in the service and they get their healing. You didn't get yours. Keep remembering. Because see, what Jesus told disciples, he's not dead. He's just sleeping. Matter of fact, the door's shut so he can't be bothered. Huh? So the only thing that was keeping Lazarus was coming out was the stone. So the stone was waiting on the word. Remember, the stone was waiting on the word because when Jesus showed up, the Bible says Jesus wept, and most people think, well, you know, Jesus wept because of Lazarus. He didn't weep because of Lazarus. He already knew Lazarus was coming. He didn't weep. He already told him he ain't dead. You know what he's weeping? Because of all the teachings that he's done that they wouldn't remember. They didn't remember. Because they didn't get excited. They didn't start praising. They didn't start worshiping when Jesus showed up. They became spectators. He was weeping because he didn't have enough participators. So I wonder how many times Jesus comes to a service and he weeps because we don't have enough participators in our services. We got plenty of spectators. Oh, look, preacher, I hope you got your A game today because I need to be moved. Well, I'm just going to be honest with you. I hope you brought your A game today so I can have my A game. Huh? So, baby, let me tell you something. I, we, like I said, we preach all over the world. We, go, we travel all the time. And there have been times we've been in services that I mean literally. We've had to sing for an hour. We praise and worship sometimes an hour, hour and a half. Because I'm not going to get up there if the people ain't ready. Why am I going to sit there and race a um, Waste a prophetic word from the Holy Ghost when they're not ready to receive it. Because, see, when we come to church and we gather together as like saints, when the word is being brought forth, we need to remember. Remember the word. Remember. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for your anointing and power of your Holy Spirit. Father, I think that there's not one, there's not one person will leave here the same way that they came in Jesus' name. But Father, I pray. If there's anyone here that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I don't want them to leave here without Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That the enemy is the master of their life. I want to destroy that element in their life. And so if you're here this morning and you say, Preacher, I've never received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I know I need Jesus in my life. Or you may say, preacher, I've accepted Jesus at one time. But I know I'm not living the way I should be living. I know I need to turn my life around. I need to go back and remember. So I need prayer this morning. If that's you, I'm getting ready to pray. I want you to lift your hand up all over this place. I'm getting ready to pray. If that's you, come on, let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Anywhere? All over this place. Yes, sir, I see the hand. Yes, sir, I see that hand. Someone else. Someone else. Let me see your hand. Now I'm going to do something different. I'm going to pray with you right now. And I want everyone to lift your hands towards heaven. I want everyone to lift their hands towards heaven. I want everybody to say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you of being a God of many chances. I repent right now. Devil, you take your hands of God's property. I confess in my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I receive the engrafted word of God into my life now in Jesus' name. Now give God a shout of praise.
Come on, give God a shout of praise. I said, come on, give God a shout of praise. Real quickly, real quickly, I got to obey the Holy Ghost. Someone's here, you've been having problems with your shoulder, down through your neck and down your shoulder. Where you at? Real quick, where you at? How about that? Come on, that's you. Get up here real quick. I got I to gotta obey the Holy Ghost. Wow. How the bullshit. Now, you know when the Holy Ghost calls you out, it's a done deal, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. My, my, my. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Come on, ushers, get ready. I'm about to release an awning. Come on, let me have my, I got any more ushers? Hallelujah. Shut up, get behind him right now. Glory to God. She kill out that bullshit. My, my, my. My, my, my. Come on, get ready. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, I know some of you may be off duty today, but I need your ushers. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift your hands up right now. Come on, everybody's got an usher behind them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Glory to God. Shila Bosaha. Shala da Bosahe. There you go. Everyone's got an usher behind you. So get ready to receive. Don't worry about being caught. You're taken care of. Father, right now. Everybody put your hands this way. Father, right now. Oh my God. Shala da Bosahe. Shala da Bosahe. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Devil! You take your hands off God's property right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the oh she cut out that will say. There it is. 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 Oh my she cut out that will say. Mad will say. Glory to God. Glory to God. Shut out that will say. Holy Ghost. Top of your head. Top of your head. Soles of your feet. These hands. These hands. These hands. These hands. These hands. These hands in the name of Jesus. 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 Shut out that double say. In the name of Jesus. Complete. 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 In the name of Jesus. Show oh, there it is right there. Glory to God. She cut out that double say. One in the Glory to God. Glory to God. There it is. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. Shut out that double say. There it is right there. Woo, she cut out that double say. In the name, receive it right now. In the name. Oh, somebody give God a shout of praise. One working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. One working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. One working power in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. Real quickly, I was going to close right now. You can have some right here through your back area, right here. La Bolsa. Come on, you've been having some, some back problems right here. Where you at? Get up here quickly. Come on, don't hesitate. My God. Shut out that Bolsa. Mada Bolsa. Mada Bolsa. Look at this. My God. My God. Look, this is the last day, Kate, man. Come on, stay with me now. Come on, stay with me. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost Saints. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost Saints. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ushers, get ready. My God. There's a release of the healing anointing in this place. Oh, she cut it at a bosa. Marabose. 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 Oh, she cut it at a bosa. Marabose. Marabose. In the name. In the name. In the name. In the name. There it is, right there. Oh, she in the name of Jesus. It, oh, there it is. Woo, there it is, right there. In the name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She called. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, there it is, right there. Shalada. My, 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 my. Oh, my, my, my. In the name. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. There is power, power, hey. Power, power, one working power in the blood. Healing right there. There it is. Woo, shut it up. In the name of Jesus. There it is. My God. I feel there it is. I feel that. 
I feel that. There it is. The glory of God. The healing anointing right there. She cut out a strength to this body right now. I speak strength to this body right now. Remember, 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 remember. There it is right there. Oh my God. Oh my God. My God. My God. There it is right there. Shut out of the bullshit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hadabose. Hadabose. In the name. In the name. In the name. There it is. Right there. Glory to God. She cut out of the bullshit. In the name. In the name. There it is. There it is. Glory to God. Oh my God. Madabose. 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 She cut out of the bullshit. In the name. Oh, there it is. My, my, my. Wow. Remember. Thank you, Jesus. Why is no other found? I know I am washed, I am washed, I am drenched in love. And oh, precious is the glory that makes me white as snow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Now, I can't get to everybody. Some of you battling your mind. I just, I just heard the Holy Ghost say there's, you've been balanced like a constant battle. You don't need to get out of your seat. I just want you to raise your hand right now. Come on, don't be ashamed of look at this wow and take your other hand and put it on your head huh glory to God wow 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 oh get ready things are about to change my God huh man I see the glory in this place I see the glory of the Lord in this place there's a light mist oh my God shut up get ready father in the name of Jesus I rebuke the thoughts of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. I release peace and joy of the Holy Ghost in them now. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. I speak peace of mind. There it is. 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 All over this place. I see the angels of the Lord touching your mind right now. All over this place. Oh, come on, somebody. Give God a shout of praise. Come on, give God a shout of praise. It's over. Shout, it's over. Shout, it's over. Oh, my 
my God, it's over. Wow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm here today. Wow. Somebody say, wow. Say it backwards. Glory to God. Something is about to change. Something's about to happen. How about it? Don't matter how big that demon looks, how big that devil is. Maybe you better watch out because I'm praying an anointing of compassion. Devil, you better somebody. Devil, you better watch out. You just don't think this is an accident that Jesus happened to choose his path now, do you? There's no such things as coincidence when it comes to the kingdom of God. Since we partnered with Turning Point International Ministries, we've benefited a lot, especially relationship-wise. We have uh, been able to grow up our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ as well as grow our physical relationships. I love supporting PPIM because I know they're having an impact all over the world. And I want to be a part of that. I want to sow into good ground. I had a dream that I was very gaming and he showed me the the mass of people that would be affected through their ministries. Being partners with TPIM has just been so enriching for our lives just to know that every dollar sown, every prayer that's prayed goes to lives being saved, um, souls being delivered and set free, and we couldn't be happier to be part of such a vast and growing ministry. We've been able also to benefit in understanding our purpose, our destiny, being able to understand what God has called us and through relationships we can work together and be able to fulfill what God has called us to fulfill. Because I know that wherever they're sowing seeds, there's going to be a mighty harvest and I want to be a part of that. And uh, I've known the Privet family for many, many years and they are people of integrity and they run the ministry with excellence. TPIM is more than just partnership with us uh, when it comes to Pastor Phil Jr. and Jerry Ann. It's family. family. Hello, we're John and Stephanie Marsh from Wilmington, North Carolina. At the beginning of this week, I had a big, huge compression boot on my left ankle. Um, had a broken left ankle and could not put weight on it without the compression boot. Could not go up and down stairs. And um, one of the things that I asked the Lord for this week was to heal my ankle. And this um, Wednesday night, um, the spirit of the Lord just fell. Um, his presence was so heavy and I don't remember very much, but I know when I got up off the floor, my ankle was 100% healed. And as you can see, I am wearing boots and um, am able to dance, jump, um, go up and down steps, and there is absolutely no pain. Hi, my name is Sarah Kittle, and I'm almost 74 years old. And I say that with great pride. And I just praise God for the healing. God healed my neck and my shoulders on Sunday morning. Pain that had been there for a while. It has not been back. It will not come back. I will not allow it to come back because this week I have learned more about not only who I am, but who the I am is who lives within me. And then last night, uh, God healed arthritis in my hands. <clears throat> All the pain has been gone. And I'm a voice teacher, so I play hours and hours and hours. And so when I got home and I looked at swollen knuckles, I thought, well, Lord, if the pain's gone, we might as well just get the knuckles to looking good again, too. So I'm, they're almost, the swelling is almost completely gone. And so it's a girl thing. Partnership with Turning Point International is two-sided. Not only do you provide a support system for this worldwide ministry, but every relationship is covered in prayer daily by Phil and Jerry Ann. 
monthly communication, and free resources are also yours. Consider partnering with this dynamic team today by visiting philprovitjr.com. Make a monthly commitment of any amount for PayPal or Venmo on the website, and your journey with TPIM will begin. And uh, we want to say thank you because you guys are partners with us. This ministry is partners with us. And we couldn't do it without our partners. And if you are interested, because we got several partners that are here, some that travel from different states this morning to be a part. They go, if I'm within three hours, they're going to be there. And, uh, and from Sarasota, we thank you so much for coming. They're partners with us. But if you're interested, you can go by the, our, our CD and book table. There's information packet back there, and uh, they'll help you. Dad, thank you so much. I love this man. 